Hi everyone and welcome to Perima's Kitchen. I am Selina, my daughter is Shivaya and today we are making chicken masala biryani. I specifically am using Cornish curry pieces today. Both my chicken masala biryani and my mutton masala biryani is different to my other biryani recipes. It is more concentrated in comparison and I generally love those strong robust flavours and therefore it is one of my favourites and I'm so happy I get to share it with you. Let's get to it. The most important part of any biryani is our marinade. You can do it the night before. You need 500 millilitres of sour milk or mass. Next I'm adding 2 teaspoons of cumin powder, that's our jeera, followed by 2 teaspoons of roasted dhania powder, that's our coriander, a teaspoon of som, which is our fennel, a teaspoon of garam masala, a level teaspoon of ilachi, our cardamom powder, a teaspoon of turmeric, and half a teaspoon of yellow coloring, that's our egg yellow, followed by our masala. I'm adding three tablespoons of masala, and I'm using Nagya's everyday masala, followed by two tablespoons of Kashmiri chili powder. I'm using hot, but you can use mild or hot. You can also add your ginger and garlic as well as your biryani mix and even your salt now but I will add it a little later. All the quantities are in the description below if you want to add it prior. It is one and a half teaspoons of biryani mix, two teaspoons of ginger and garlic and a heaped tablespoon of fine salt. I'm adding my beautiful Cornish pieces and I want to rub that all in, all that marinade in. I'm a visual person, so I need to see the quantities before I add my salt and ginger and garlic, but I've worked it out for you. It's two teaspoons of ginger and garlic and a heaped tablespoon of fine salt. You can also add one and a half teaspoons of ground biryani mix. I'm also going to add whole spices when I'm cooking and then give it a final rub and as I mentioned you can also prepare this the night before or at least an hour prior to your cooking. I'm adding two heaped tablespoons of ghee and once my ghee is hot I'm going to start adding my biryani mix. I'm just going to go through it with you. I got half a teaspoon of some seeds half a teaspoon of jeera seeds, three cloves, two star anise, cinnamon sticks, bay leaves, cardamom pods, my ilachi pods, make sure it's broken, and one black ilachi. Now let it sizzle in the oil. I'm now adding my thyme and curry leaves. If it's still wet, please dab it with some roller towel before you add it to your hot oil. Next, I'm adding three green chilies and one large onion that I've sliced. You can turn down your heat, but let all of your whole spices fry up in the oil. And when your onions are slightly translucent, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of turmeric, followed by three jam tomatoes, which I've diced and half a teaspoon of sugar or any sweetener of your choice. We can now close our lid and let our onions, our whole spices and our tomatoes simmer for five to 10 minutes. It's now ready and we can start adding our beautifully marinated chicken, our Cornish pieces. Make sure to add all of that lovely marinade left over in your bowl as well. 
Mix all those incredible whole spices into your marinated chicken. Cornish will take longer to cook. I'm going to leave it now for approximately an hour. We can check up on it occasionally. And while it's cooking on a low to medium heat, I'm going to show you how I prepare my rice and my lentils. I've washed two and a half cups of long grained basmati rice. I'm now adding my boiling water. And because most of my basmati rice won't be added to my chicken biryani mixture, I need to infuse some flavor and spices into the rice itself. I add a couple of bay leaves, some broken cardamom pods, that's my lachi, and a few cinnamon sticks, half a teaspoon of turmeric, and salt to taste. Your basmati rice will be ready way before your cornish is, so make sure you check up on it. We're going to now move on to the lentils. I've washed and cleaned 200 grams, that's less than a cup of lentils, my masoor dal or biryani dal. I've added boiling water. Next, I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, as well as some cinnamon sticks. And you can play around with it. Sometimes I add mint or thyme. My salt to taste. And we're gonna let our lentils boil. Moving back to my basmati rice. I've drained any water and I'm adding approximately three big spoonfuls of basmati rice to my bowl. and approximately a teaspoon and a half of egg yellow coloring. You can even use saffron if you want to. Mix it all in and set it aside. We're going to use it towards the end of our biryani when we're layering. My lentils are ready, I've drained them. I'm adding half of my portion to the rice. And the other half, I'm going to keep it for the Cornish mixture, the chicken mixture. And give it a slight mix so it's evenly distributed into your rice. We can now check up on our Cornish masala. It's been approximately an hour thus far. We are now ready to add our potatoes. I'm adding five potatoes that I've halved. Make sure to pierce your potatoes with a knife so they cook evenly. As I'm not adding any water, if you want to or need to add a dash of boiling water, please do so. Ensure that your potatoes are slightly submerged inside all of that gravy so it can absorb that tremendous flavor. With my other biryanis, I do prefer to have a roasted potato or even a fried potato or baked potato. But in a Cornish masala biryani, one of my favorite things is when the potato absorbs all that mouth-watering flavors. Add salt to taste. And we're going to let it cook now for a further half an hour. Stay 20 minutes to half an hour until your potatoes are ready. It's been approximately 30 minutes. The potatoes are ready. I'm now drizzling some fresh cream. And this adds to the moisture of your Cornish masala biryani. So try this if you want to. Next, I'm adding my Followed fresh by mint, fresh coriander. Next, I'm going to add all the lentils, the balance of the lentils that I set aside. Scoop everything onto your biryani. And once you're done, carefully mix some of that lentils into that luscious, fragrant gravy. How delicious does that look? 
Next, we're gonna add our basmati rice. I'm only adding about four or five spoonfuls of basmati rice. So a quarter of the total basmati that I've boiled. And your basmati rice together with your lentils will absorb all of that vibrant, luscious, spicy flavor, which essentially gives it that Cornish masala taste. And if you want, you can even give it a slight mix without breaking your potatoes. I'm now adding a portion of my colored rice, my egg yellow rice. I will add the remainder of it to my basmati rice, my yellow basmati rice. And this is purely for aesthetics. It does make your biryani look so much more appetizing and tempting. You can even add any extra coriander or mint that you have. And finally, I've melted approximately three tablespoons of butter. I'm adding half of it to the plain basmati rice with the lentils and the balance of the butter. I'm drizzling it onto my Cornish masala biryani. You can also add a dash of boiling water if you wish and let it steam for approximately 10 minutes on a low heat. The aroma is absolutely magical. You can serve your Cornish chicken biryani with some rice on the side and some refreshing raita. And don't forget to add one of those yummy melting potatoes. Cornish masala biryani is packed with flavor. So if you ever feel like you need some extra rice, you can always add it. And because the ratio of rice to masala is flexible, you can address everybody's preferences, guaranteeing that everyone will love it. If you try this recipe, please let me know. I'll be so excited to hear from you. All the ingredients used will be found in the drop-down description below. Please subscribe. Kindly hit the notification bell so you are notified when a new video is uploaded. I upload every single week. Please like and share. And your comments are always welcome. Thank you very much and see you again soon in Perima's Kitchen. I am Solina.